Alright, alright. I'll finish watching it later. Don't you just love these old classics? Anyway, I guess it's time to get back to work. Today we're going to dive into some of the more advanced electricity items. How to obtain or craft and how to use them. If you're not already familiar with the basics of electricity, do have a look at my electricity tutorial to give you a starting point. We aim to get it certified as an electrician in the following items. Battery bank, the solar bank, and of course the solar cells, the basic switch, the electrical timer relay, the spotlight, speaker, motion sensor, the two types of trigger plates, and lastly, the trip wires. Firstly, let's have a look at the battery bank. It's a very useful way of storing electricity and it works well together with the generator bank or the solar bank. While it very rarely can be found in loot, generally it's found at the trader for purchase. If you're lucky, you can also buy the battery bank schematic at the trader as long as you can find it, but you need to have secret stash of at least one and of course some luck. But if you can find it, I would definitely recommend buying it. Crafting it is quite straightforward. Of course, you need to do that at the workbench, like pretty much all the electric items. You need to have 10 forged iron, 8 electrical parts, 3 electronic components, and 6 scrap plastics. So let's grab this one here. While in use, of course, you also need to have some batteries. So let me steal this battery here. Let me place it down. We're going to hit E to interact with it. The user interface should be pretty straightforward and you should be used to it by now. So it has six slots. You put in the batteries and the quality of the battery will determine what the max output is. Of course, the power is the power draw and you need to turn on for it to start giving out power. We don't have anything hooked up right now, so it's not going to drain anything. If you see the bar, and that is actually the charge of the battery. So as you utilize it, the battery charge will be dropping. And if you have multiple batteries, you'll see them dropping one by one. In order to recharge it, you hook it up to generator and let it run. And that will slowly recharge the batteries in the battery bank. So let's move on to the solar bank and the solar cells. And these are two items that cannot be crafted and they also cannot be looted. They can only be purchased at the trader. If you have secret stash of two and of course some luck, you can find solar cells. But if you want to get the solar bank, it requires you to have the secret stash of three and a fair, fair bit of luck. And in addition, they're also very pricey. So that makes them quite a late game item. So let me take them here. So let me place them down here on my balcony. So you place them down just like you do any other items. And you hit E in order to access it, but instead of engines or batteries, you put in the solar cells. And you'll see the max output goes up and that is also dependent again on how many solar cells you have and the respective quality. Let me turn on, now of course we have nothing hooked up yet. But I can connect our battery bank to the solar cell. And that will help to keep the battery charges topped up. A little bit noises, so let's turn on turn it off here for a moment. The output of the solar bank is going to be lower than the generator. However, it also does not require any fuel. One of the big downsides is that it's only active during the day, so combining them with the battery bank can be quite useful. This allows you to power items from the solar bank during the daytime, but from the batteries themselves during the nighttime. You might want to make sure that you're balancing the power draw so you don't run out the batteries before morning comes and the solar bank can start recharging the batteries. So that can require a little, a bit of tweaking. However, since it's effectively maintenance free, it also saves you from, you know, checking and topping up fuel, just like you have to do with the general generator. Next, let's have a look at the basic switch. If you've learned the electric triggers perk to level one, you can also craft it just by using a couple of forged iron, mechanical part, and an electrical part. Let me grab it here. You place it down and you hook it up. Let me hook it up to the battery bank. 
and also to one of the lights I have here. I turn on the battery bank and you'll see that it glows red, which means that it has input power, but the light is still off, obviously. I turn on the switch and the light goes on. Turn off, goes on. The green basically shows that the switch is active. If I remove the input, you'll see that it goes gray, so it has no input power. A switch can be a useful item for turning on lights at dark, for instance, only activating traps at certain times. So it's a pretty common item to use in your electrical circuits. To automate basic time usage, however, you can also craft the electric timer relay. It only requires a couple of forged iron, electrical parts, and electric components. You do need to have the electric triggers perk up to two in order to unlock it. I'm going to place it down here. And we hook it up just like any other item. Let's turn on. When you hit each axis, you can tell what the start time is going to be and what the end time is going to be. And if you see right now, it's 841, which means it's going to be on. If I bring this one down to eight, you see it turns off. Bring it up to nine, it will turn on. While it works almost like a normal relay, you basically set up the timer to activate your downstream circuits. This allows you to do some pretty interesting things such as having all your lights go on as night falls and turn off as dawn breaks. This allows you to conserve power. It also saves you from having to continually flick switches to accomplish the same thing. While we've already covered crafting normal light, the spotlight has a nice feature you can use beyond just providing light. You need to have the electric basic perk at two to unlock it. It requires the headlight, eight electrical parts, two duct tape, and 50 scrap iron. So it's fairly pricey in comparison. And place it down here. So I'm going to hook it up here to the switch. And it turns on. If you hit E, you turn off and on. But if you hold E, you get a slightly different interface. It allows you, of course, to turn on and off, but it also allows you to aim it. And that brings up this UI with a camera preview. You left click on it, and all of a sudden, you can aim it. Depending on which direction you are facing, it allows you to aim it 180 degrees. So let's aim it to the left here and escape to get out. As you see, it's now pointing inwards. This makes it quite a nice light in order to light up inside or outside of your base at specific spots. Normal lights, of course, can be useful, but they can't be aimed in the same way as the spotlight. They also tend to only have light around the light itself, as this one, whereas the spotlight is going to illuminate in front of it. So if you want to make some noise, the speaker is the perfect nuisance companion. It requires you to have the electric perks, electric basics perk of two before it's unlocked. But after that, it only costs four forged iron and three electrical parts. So they're pretty cheap to make. Place it down here, switch off the light and connect it. If I now switch it on, well, it can be fairly annoying. So why would you want to have annoying sound from a speaker? Well, that's where you combine it with, for instance, the motion sensor. That's basically a camera that can oversee an area and trigger on certain criteria. It does require the electric triggers perk of three, so it is a, t a tier three item. You craft it with a couple of forged iron, electrical parts, one mechanical parts, and some electrical components. Let's see if we can place that one down. And we're gonna hook it up. And we're gonna hook up this speaker to it instead of from the switch. As with a lot of items, we hit E to interact with it. And this is where you basically configure it. 
you can tell to what it's going to trigger on zombies, strangers, allies, or self. You can also tell whether it's going to have an instant power transmission or whether it's going to delay it. You can also tell the duration, whether it's untriggered or a certain amount of seconds. Let's reset it. Reset doesn't seem to work. You can also aim the camera. Well, okay, I have to. Let me step out of the way here and hit left button and aim it. And if I then aim it myself and escape, you hear that the speaker goes off because it's triggered from the motion sensor. If I walk into the motion sensor, the speaker turns on as well. And this can, of course, be very useful in guarding certain areas. You could connect the motion sensor to other traps, such as turrets, blade, or dart traps, and then have them only activate once there's a zombie there. Or you can just point it at certain areas and activate on, say, zombies, and get alerted when a zombie is spotted coming to your base. Well, let's turn it off here. There are two other ways for triggering other electrical items. The first of them is the aptly named trigger plates. There's a one by one and there's a one by five. They functionally work the same way, but they have different costs and of course they're different sizes. The one by one costs 10 to two versus the five by one, which costs 50, eight, six. But beyond that, they work the same way. So let me take one of them. So let's place down one of the plates here. You need to have the electric triggers perk at level two in order to craft them. But once you have that, they're actually not that expensive. So let me hook it up here. Let's hook it up to the battery bank here. And to the light. Now, if you hit E, you can configure it, you know, the power delay and the power duration. If I step on it, the light goes on. If I move off, it goes off again. And the five by one works exactly the same way. It just is longer. So let me grab the larger one. I'll show you, let me place it down here. Let me hook it up to the battery bank into the light. You see, if I step on it, it'll light up. The larger one can be useful in corridors that are wider because it only allow, uh, requires you to have one item to trigger for zombies walking in, for instance. And normally you would connect it to various traps and perhaps a speaker just to alert you that there are zombies walking around your base. The final way to trigger input is with a tripwire. It's also the cheapest and it only requires five wood per post. Of course, you need two of them and one electrical part. You also only need the electrical triggers perk of one. So it's a quite an early item to craft. You place them down like any other item. Let me place one here and one here. Wire to power. Connect the first tripwire and you connect that tripwire to the second one. And let's connect that one to say this light. Because it's a wire, you, you can hide it a little bit better than the other ones, but it essentially works the same way. You hit the wire, something turns on and off. You will, however, notice that because it's just a wire, the detection area is a lot smaller than the pressure plate. The pressure plates covers a whole block versus the wire that only covers a small area. One of the nice things with the trip wires is that you can place them higher up. You can place them on the second block, for instance, which means that they'll be at the chest level of zombies and they will not trigger on crawlers, for instance, or on wolves or dogs. And that gives you a little bit more flexibility. It also allows you to cover a little bit larger areas because the tripwire post can be placed up to 15 apart versus, of course, the trigger plates, which we're only going to cover either one or five spaces. So by using tripwire posts, you can cover a fair bit more, up to three times the distance. 
If you hit E, you can configure them just like you can the trigger plates. By now, I'm sure your brain is filled with cool ideas of how to make use of all this in your particular base builds. And I recommend you to just explore and try things out and see what interesting combinations you can come up with. Do make sure to share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section below. I'll place a link to the basic electricity video in the description in case you need to go back and review it. As always, leave a like and a sub if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you again in the next video. As for me, I'm going to go back and finish watching the movie.